welcome to the first video lesson for Unit 3, Foundations of Economic Globalization. In this video, you will be introduced to some of the key foundations of our current global economy. Globalization has made us interdependent. We literally depend on each other to prosper. In Unit 3, we will be looking at economic globalization and development. Every country wants to have a sustainable economic development. This means that you want your economy to grow, but in a way that ensures that the economy can continue to grow in the future in order to ensure prosperity for people today and the next generation. The idea of prosperity can focus on material goods, your standard of living, or it can also include your uh, quality of life, your social relationships, and the environment. Governments must make decisions that will impact the sustainable development of their citizens. Let's examine how one of the most important foundations of economic globalization, capitalism, evolved. During the Middle Ages, small regions were uh, controlled by a powerful ruler who would promise the local people security in exchange for financial support. So the ruler would provide the knights and a castle to hide in, in case he came under attack. In return, the peasants would work the land and pay taxes. The ruler could tell the peasants where they could work and what job they could do. Over time, this evolved as those rulers became more powerful and eventually they turned into kings. We say that the economy was a mercantilist system because the king could control the merchants in order to ensure that the monarchy always had enough money to have strong armies. By the 1700s, people started to question this and a famous philosopher, Adam Smith, outlined the ideas of modern capitalism. He said that the government shouldn't be controlling the economy because the wealth of the nation wasn't in how much gold the country had, but could be found in all the goods and services created by the people. He argued that anyone should be allowed to start any business they want, and the invisible hand will control the economy instead of the king. Eventually, these ideas led to the Industrial Revolution, which we looked at, looked at in the last unit, as it inspired imperialism and historical globalization. Capitalism continued as it was up until the early 1900s, when a series of major events changed the world. In 1914, the great imperial powers went to war with each other in World War I which lasted until 1918. World War I would see the fall of several of these major empires. During World War I in 1917, the Russian Revolution led to the rise of communism and the Soviet Union, which would create an opposing economic system to capitalism known as communism. Then in 1929, capitalism failed as it, as it led to the Great Depression. The Great Depression began when the New York stock market crashed, which was a global market ex exchange of goods. This led to businesses losing billions of dollars worldwide and millions of people all across the world lost their jobs. The Great Depression also led to the rise of Adolf Hitler and the fascist Nazi party in Germany. Hitler, as well as some other fascist countries like Italy and Japan, would trigger the Second World War in 1939. World War II was the largest and most devastating war in history and would last until 1945. 85 million soldiers and civilians died in World War II and the world was completely changed forever. It also led to the rise of two new superpower countries, the United States and the Soviet Union, which would both lead to the competition between capitalism in the United States and communism in the Soviet Union, as well as another global conflict called the Cold War. After World War II, many governments realized that a poor economy can lead to the rise of support for extreme political ideas like fascism and communism to fix their problems. So they decided to come together to, to encourage international trade with each other to prevent that instability between countries. They believed that a capitalist system where citizens of countries are free to trade with each other would encourage greater world peace. At the Bretton Woods Conference in 1945, 44 nations came together and signed agreements that created the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, or IMF. The World Bank was created for countries to access loans needed to rebuild their countries after the devastation of World War II. Today, the World Bank helps poor developing countries to get loans from a fund that is funded by developed nations. This can help a developing nation to strengthen their economy and encourage national trade, which has an impact on global peace because you don't really usually go to war with someone who you trade with. In order to get a loan from the World Bank, the government of the developing country must agree to reduce their debt, try to eliminate corruption in the government, and establish a more capitalist economy in order to minimize the economic costs to the government for social programs. These ideas of a global economy based on capitalism were supported by two very important and influential economists, Friedrich Hayek 
and Milton Friedman. You will learn a lot more about these two economists in Social Studies 30. Similar to the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, can also provide emergency loans to countries, but they are usually more short-term loans. And like the World Bank, the IMF will require the borrowing nation-state to implement more capitalist policies to help pay back their debt. The IMF also monitors currencies to help us determine what, currency, what a currency is worth. This helps encourage international trade because you want to make sure you are getting a fair price for goods, but how would you know that if you don't know the value of their currency? So the exchange rate between different currencies is regulated by the IMF. It uses the American dollar, which was the most stable currency in 1945, as a standard currency to value all other currencies like the Canadian dollar, the European euro, the Chinese yen, and so on. Another foundation of the global economy established after World War II was global trade. In 1947, 23 countries agreed to establish the General Agreement on Trade and Tariffs, otherwise known as GATT, which worked, worked to establish free trade around the world. Free trade is trade that is free from tariffs and other regulations that inhibit international trade. Before World War II, countries charged a tax on imported goods, known as tariffs, in order to create their own national economy. However, GATT was an agreement among countries to avoid charging tariffs and lean towards a uh, free trade. In 1995, GATT expanded to a larger trade agreement today known as the World Trade Organization, or the, or the WTO. Today, members of the WTO must abide by various agreements to encourage international trade, and there is a panel that can help to mediate conflicts between member nations. There are other organizations that encourage trade liberalization, which is the removal or reduction of barriers to trade between nations, such as tariffs and created free trade between countries. Trade liberalization has led to countries creating trade blocks, which are regional tra free trade agreements. Two key trade blocks are the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, between Canada and the United States and Mexico, and the European Union, or the EU, which was an agreement established between most of the countries of Europe to trade goods freely and establish more open borders and cooperation. Both of these trade agreements have their pros, like the fact that it encourages peaceful trade between neighbors, it expands already successful programs like the Auto Pact that allow car parts to be made in either the United States or Canada without any tariffs on those car, car parts. And when it is easier to trade goods, that often creates job, more jobs, which promotes, uh, promotes sustainable economic development. The cons is that due to globalization, these jobs are easier to move around, so companies will move their manufacturing jobs from Canada and the United States to developing countries where there is cheaper labor costs. People migrate to these developing countries, which, which can lead to wages going down, which is a major challenge for global sustainable development. All of these agreements encourage trade liberalization, which has increased economic globalization. Transnational or multinational corporations have become a way of life. Communication technology means that I can have my head office in Canada, my factories in China, and my support center in India. Why would I have my call support center in India? Because many people in India speak English, thanks to India's history of being colonized by the British. And often people in North America want to call for help in the evening, but North Americans are at home and not working, so it's cheaper and more convenient for corporations to have their call centers in India on the other side of the world where it's in the middle of the day. Transportation technology means that it's much easier to, and cheaper to ship goods around the world, which is why it makes sense for comp my company to be making products in China. Have you ever seen the images of those major shipping ports like Vancouver uh, with, with those huge stacks of shipping containers? Those shipping containers were revolutionary for trade. In the past, before shipping containers, if you wanted to transport something to another country, you'd have to load it onto a truck, then unload it to load it onto a rail car. Then once you got the rail car to the port, you'd have to unload it again to load it onto the ship and then repeat the whole process in the destination country. This process is simplified now because thousands of shipping containers can be loaded off the back of a truck onto a ship without having to unpack the goods until they reach their destination. This saves billions of dollars in shipping and cuts transportation at a fraction of the time. Shipping containers have revolutionized the way uh, countries have traded goods with each other.